Right, good afternoon guys and welcome once again to one of London's magnificent seven cemeteries. As you know in the past I have done Highgate on two occasions, one a couple of years ago and one most recently. That got me back into the idea of doing these because it's like a bit of a an urban explore. It's abandoned in places yet it's not abandoned because people still get buried. Not so much here um, since I think it's the late 1970s unless you had a family plot here um, no one's interred here but as it goes we've done that one and we've also done most recently Kensal Green that will leave me with four others to do which I'll probably talk about later and um, yeah should be interesting let's go and do this as there are very few significant names of note in this particular cemetery of course they will be to someone um, household names wise I've ended up going to Manor Park Cemetery and the City of London Cemetery just to throw a few bits that have got a bit of intrigue just to this vlog so watch out for those guys right as an inclusion of where we are going today we have to visit two other cemeteries to come across some very specific people which just help with the vlog itself. Abney Park is obviously a very overgrown, very old cemetery but it's not got the significant names will be in public life. This one not so much in public life but it's the second victim of probably the most notorious villain killer in history and that is of course Annie Chapman the second victim of Jack the Ripper who was butchered on September the 8th 1888 so that's somewhere in the region of must be 136 years perhaps the idea of the pennies is people put that here in tribute I think it's something in the region of four pence would have given shelter for that night really really sad and I think this is the only interment obviously I dare say the body was moved and this is more of a commemorative area because of over a hundred years people get reburied so on and so forth but yeah this is the only grave that actually mentions that is a victim of Jack the Ripper. The rest are just standalone graves. Of all these cemeteries I've been in of late, I'm gonna go out on a limb and turn around and say, this is probably the spookiest, because it's just simply overgrown and you're led on tight winding paths where you've got to be careful to step over the graves and in between but it's just the way the park goes kind of expected to see wildlife out here the likes of obviously squirrels at Highgate I see a fox on a tomb that'd be pretty cool but what I want to see more than anything else when I'm very unlikely to is of course a badger I've only ever seen one badger live in the wild. The rest, unfortunately, be on the roadside. But yeah, just look around us. It's like a, a forest has engulfed all the tombs. Again here, size is everything. It's a 31 acre site. I believe around 200,000 interments. That's got to be over 55 to 60 thousand tombs. Area close proximity or in the London borough of Hackney. This area is across the road from Stoke Newington train station, which is an overground line. And somewhere in amongst all this, I dare say it's going to be in the middle, is a grade two listed Descent in Gothic Chapel. 
and I believe at one point it was derelict but I think it's in use now on site here at the City of London Cemetery is this absolutely wonderful little pond with loads of fish and loads of friendly little turtles flapping about in fact you might turn around and say that a lot of them where you see the watermarks coming up are blowing bubbles and well they should be to be honest with you because the significance of that is an absolute legend legend of the game legend to all West Ham fans England alike the only England captain to ever lift the World Cup trophy or Jules Rene trophy as it was known back then in the day I think he played something like 600 games for West Ham United over 100 for England scored a few goals but that was not his mainstay he was a central defender and of course he then went on to play for the likes of Fulham before playing out in the United States and he of course was the one and only Bobby Moore England captain 1966 had to pay homage to you may you rest in peace bought a silly little England sticker I'll just pull it gently there it can blow away in the breeze but yeah you don't get them like that nowadays we seem to have failed at every step since then I think they were built of sterner stronger stuff we've had a lot of promise but we've never really reached it in fact the last World Cup or European Championship we seem to trip our way past each round not like the days of old may you rest in peace boy pretty much everywhere you walk in it's a uneven pathway and as you can see a lot of tombs have seen better days this isn't vandalism this is just over the years trees have fallen down and of course this area would have been about when the blitz was going on so I dare say there were some graves that were disturbed by explosives etc the second edition cemetery to where we're going today which is obviously well, where you can see me filming Abney Park this is the City of London Cemetery we've been in Manor Park Cemetery where we see Annie Chapman this has got a few significant graves as well so I just thought I'd like to as I was in the area pay homage point them out maybe say a thing about their stories and keep their memories alive but this place is absolutely enormous around this area here you will find two more victims two more commemorative graves of the victims of the infamous Jack the Ripper one coming up right to our right hand side now this to commemorate Mary Ann Nichols. Now I believe Mary Ann Nichols was the very first victim of Jack the Ripper. May she rest in peace. Here they haven't had the coins left. Maybe perhaps someone comes around, collects them, gives them to charity at a later date. It all helps out. But I've never worked it out whether four pence in nowadays current currency works out the same as what it would have been for a bed for the night back in the late 1880s but the killer himself it's just legendary because they say he was never caught but is that a case of he just died or was he caught 
there are a few conclusions to who it might have been. My view, along with, I guess, many others, because I think it was about maybe a decade ago, perhaps less, there was an investigation and they found some DNA on the clothing of one of the victims on a shawl. And that DNA matched one Aaron Kosmensky. Um, he was a Polish barber, immigrant, come over here. Now people were saying, well, must have had someone with surgical knowledge. Not necessarily, and bear in mind, obviously you got the other true tales of London time of Sweeney Todd cutting people's throats. The, the sharpest blade apart from a scalpel, a scalpel should I say, is that of a cutthroat razor. A tool, of course, of the trade of a barber. Now, I suppose back in those days, you didn't so much have the butchers like you did now. You went and purchased either a rabbit or a duck or a goose, etc., and chopped it up at home. So maybe he got used to doing it that way. Now here is another tomb. This is, of course, Catherine Eddowes. She was the second victim of one of the knights, I believe. I might have been the first. I, I get it mixed up. I know in total there were five victims. Um, Catherine Eddowes, Mary Kelly, Polly Ann Nichols, um, Elizabeth Stride, and Annie Chapman. All butchered by the same man. Or so we're led to believe. There are other stories that go about the turn around and say that he actually went on to escape moved to America because in the early 1900s which isn't that too far away from the time period there were sort of copycat mutilations in New York so there is a possibility there tell you what you wouldn't want to come in here at night not because of the spookiness or anything like that but trying to survive walking along these very paths you're probably going to end up succumbing to a busted ankle or a neck always time for just a little bit of wildlife a little squirrel there making himself at home beginnings of what looks like perhaps an owl or just a face in a tree this is more a park now to be honest with you than it is a cemetery obviously everybody's interred here but it's more of a park grounds certainly big I don't know why, I kind of like the fact that it's not fresh, the fact it's overgrown and it sort of goes back to a Victorian era. As I said before, some of these are specifically in a really, really bad way. shame I dare say at some point someone will come round and repurpose that a volunteer don't quote me on this I don't know if it's factual or not but I believe one of the series TV series The Waking Dead they filmed it in here and tried to make it out that it was Highgate not 100% sure on the truth of that, but I believe it's factual. I suppose it's easier being a more of a park than a cemetery to come and do some filming in here. But look, each one of these little graves just covered in ivy. Certainly got the 
eerie vibes about it. I'm kind of gutted because the weather promised that we was going to have a thunderstorm. So I'm specifically here waiting for the said thunderstorm, but there's not a cloud in the sky. One other significant commemorative plaque, little tiny burial plot. See, these would be predominantly people's ashes. And this poor soul, he didn't really have anything in the way left of him by the end. Even in death, he was not given real peace. That, of course, is the guy Synonymously known in London and obviously I've done vlogs up in Babby Woods with the Dower House and the Gatekeeper's Cottage because this very guy stayed there as a guest of the Falsley Estate. Only on two occasions but he would get solace going up and picking the bluebells up in the woods away from the prying eyes but when he died they skinned him and they put his bones on display and what is interned here was basically all the fleshy parts lungs kidneys brain of course if they didn't keep that skin every other bit all the loose bits and pieces and that was, of course, Joseph Carey Merrick, a.k.a. the Elephant Man. This is where he's laid to rest. Such a sad, sad story. He, um, to sort of escape ridicule, he joined and made up his own circus freak show. And later on they would have waxworks of the victims of Jack the Ripper on show in there as well. So the story's sort of kind of entwined. But his condition, um, Proteus or Process, um, it was like a, a growth. And basically, he couldn't lay down because if he laid down, his neck would break. But I think he just finally succumbed to his condition, laid down and passed away peacefully. And here's where he remains. May you rest in peace. This bit here kind of reminds me. I keep meaning to find, and I simply haven't, unfortunately, guys. Apart from when I was at um, Greyfriars Kirkland up in Edinburgh find the old mort safe to stop the likes of Burke and Hare the old grave robbers from the Victorian era the only good thing about what happened to them is they got caught and I can't remember which one it was whether it's Burke or Hare they actually put his body on display for everyone to see and he still is to this day Grave robbing in the time was synonymous with your health, to be honest with you. A lot of medicines, a lot of surgery was done thanks to these people digging up bodies and giving them to surgeons to practice on. And it went from there to them actually getting live bodies.
Right, we have found our Grade 2 listed Gothic Chapel. Looks like it's still used for ceremonies. Maybe people getting married, this couple here certainly look as if they are. But all of this, for years, was just totally derelict. If you're into that kind of thing, it's a stunning piece of architecture. If not, it's just a chapel or a church. There's possibly a couple of gargoyles up there. I don't look specifically ornate. Focus in a little bit. They might just be toppers to be honest with you guys. And as you can see, they're having a lot of work being done. I think it was all originally bricked up to stop the vandals. Someone over here had a distinctive love of horses. Tell you what, I reckon I've got lost a good half a dozen times in here you just go off the beaten track and because it's all like this one bit is very much like another one thing I've distinctively noticed about this cemetery of the Magnificent Seven is that there's a distinctive lack of mausoleums or crypts. They're all individual tombs. Certainly a peaceful tranquil quiet place to spend a couple of hours maybe looking to some of the history one significant now Dr Isaac Watts okay so non-conformist Christian minister and cop scholar Seventeen forty This grave here has the significance of a disaster. Remembering those who died in the Blitz, but specifically what happened to the flats in Coronation Avenue. People were refuging underneath in the air raid shelter and it took a direct hit. little corridor here significantly they're not the same don't get me wrong <laughs> but it's just seeing all these busts and things on top here reminds me of the haunted mansion where the busts would come to life and start singing
as I said, there's places around here that's literally like a jungle. The founders of the Salvation Army, William Booth. And we kind of have the one mausoleum. Rogers family tomb. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for today's vlog. I hope you found it intriguing and some of the stories, some of the significant people, especially the likes of the Elephant Man, the victims of Jack the Ripper and the legend that was Bobby Moore. And with that guys, thank you so much for watching. Not sure what I've got coming up. Um, possibly just a walk in the woods or something, but we'll see. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you in the movies. Bye for now.